Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Luis Reyes, and I am your exchange's senior enlisted advisor. Today, we're going, we're delving into the gaming world. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. I'm super excited because I'm not too familiar with this topic, so I'm looking to learn a lot today. But before we get to our special guests, Julie, Leah, how are you ladies doing today? Doing so good, Chief. It's so good to see you again. Like we, I feel like we just caught up like an hour ago, but it's good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Leah, Chief. how are you? Doing good, sir. Doing good. Hey, check out my, my joke for today. Oh, oh. Twitch joke. <laughs> here we go. When was the last time the Twitch streamer got a girlfriend? Hmm. When? <laughs> a, about a fortnight ago. Wow. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> That's not like bad Uncle Joe. Do not quit the Air Force. <laughs> yeah. All I've right. been saying it all day. <laughs> Don't wow. give it up. <laughs> Wow, guys. Hey, I need some help in the comments, please. Uh, someone help. Even Amon Green was like, don't quit your day job. This is bad. Let's, uh, let's, get, let's get this going. Julie, you mind introducing our guest? I am so excited to, today, to introduce today's guest. We are very, very, very excited that he is with us. You know him best for his successful football career as a running back with the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers. Go Big Red and the Green Bay Packers, where he was a four-time pro bowler. Since retiring from the NFL, he's followed another passion of his, gaming. Please give a round of applause for former NFL star and current eSports shoutcaster, Amon Green. Hello, what's up, Facebook gaming community? <laughs> what's up? <clears throat> thanks for having me, everyone. Hey, thanks for being here. Yes, I'm on. Thanks so much for taking time out to be with us and for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. If you have any questions for Amon, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now's a good time to start your watch party and enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not already following us, you should because Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday. Outstanding. Amon, hey, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for joining Chief Chat and, of course, you know, coming on to have some time with the military community. Um, where are you coming to us from today and what you've been doing this summer? Uh, I'm coming from my kitchen area here in <laughs> DePere, <De> Wisconsin. <laughs> um, I, what I've been doing for the past, I say, February, March, April, May, June, now July, six months is my new job at uh, Lakeland University, head coach of esports. And from February, February 17th, I have been basically on the road of recruiting, um, talking to sponsors, uh, gaming, streaming on my own Twitch channel, which is a Mind Green TV, um, doing my own podcast too. I'm on iHeartRadio, a Mind Green's Gamers Lounge. That is the name of it. We re re renamed it, so that's the new name. So I've been doing a little bit of everything, um, being a multitasker, I say at best of trying to, you know, keep up with everything. And the good thing is, I mean, COVID, even though we have things where we have to be virtual, but it didn't slow down esports and it's not going to stop esports and video games in general. It's going to continue to get the uh, snowball effect and uh, get a bailed up a lot of momentum going into the rest of 2020. You are clearly passionate about esports and you're a shoutcaster as well. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you got into that? And then for those of us who don't know, can you explain esports and then what a shoutcaster does? Yeah, I have no clue what that is. <laughs> so that last part, the last part first. So what a shoutcaster is and what esports is. So, so a shoutcaster, simply put, is just like when everyone tuned in to watch Monday Night Football or NBA on ESPN or, or TNT, watching those commentators, watching an expert of the game and somebody that's like a semi-expert to expert do the play-by-play -play and somebody do the color. <clears throat> so we're finding the best of the best to talk about Fortnite, to talk about Call of Duty, to talk about Madden in, this, in a descriptive way to well, when people view the game or the matches, they understand what's going on. So they have two people that can relay the message um, verbally 
to help people tune in that may not be like, why am I watching somebody shoot and build <laughs> things at the same time? What is this called? So you have two to three people on a panel that can explain that to the viewer <laughs> in, a, in a nutshell. Um, so, and then esports is competitive video games and it's stuff that you probably done at some point in your life and you didn't know you were doing it. Um, if you played an app game on your phone, if you played Pac-Man, if you played Donkey Kong, Fortnite, uh, Super Smash now, um, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and go back for uh, the early 2000s, you know, Halo and all those. So now those games have been brought up to the mainstream level where now big companies uh, are supporting tournaments. They're broadcasting tournaments. They're bringing events virtually to avid gamers, casual gamers, and expert gamers to say, hey, expert gamers, you could, you could be a pro. Um, mm -hmm. Casual gamers, you could go on to Twitch and stream your, your game, um, whatever, if it's an RPG to a FPS game, first-person shooter game, or RPG role-playing you know, role game. This is where casual people can go and still play. If you love it, this is what you can do. You don't have to be a pro to be seen doing what you love to do. Now you can just casually play, hang out, make new friends in terms of <laughs> your viewers and your subs and hand out uh, bits and em emotes and badges. It's, it's just a lot of fun stuff with uh, being in the e <laughs> or being in the video game, what I'll say. So do you do the color or do you do the play-by-play -play when you're shoutcasting? Well, uh, I've done both. Um, I've been the color guy uh, where uh, I have to, you know, paint a picture for, you know, somebody mm -hmm. that may not know Halo. And Halo, so I say that's why probably the game I'm more have an expertise in. And uh, Madden, obviously, I play football, so I know <laughs> the traditional football sense. But then also there's the Madden football, knowing what buttons to hit, uh, what plays that you can take advantage of a, of a defense on. We call those one-shot plays where it just takes – the quarterback, if you have a Pat Mahomes or Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson, if you scramble out of that pocket and you could throw on the run, you're going to catch somebody deep over top the, the cover three and beat it every time. And it's almost, it's pretty much almost <laughs> in a so, uh, I'm, I'm the color guy, but I've done play play by play too, because you, you sometimes you got to learn on the run. And I've done that with uh, my good buddy, uh, Larry Ridley. He's brought me into his uh, his world of Madden, and that's where I've done a lot of Madden tournaments. I've done Halo tournaments, Gears, Gears of War, Street Fighter, um, Super Smash Ultimate, and, and of course, Halo. Wow. Excellent. You I like, I like, uh, I played, I played, uh, no, no, I, I played Gears of War. That was a good game. I like that. Ooh, yeah, On Gears of War. Yeah, that Gears was a good game. I got, I got to finish Gears 5. I'm in the middle of this one area is this outdoor area and the locusts which is the aliens yeah, in the game yeah. they're 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 hunkered down and they are mm -hmm. tough to get out this area and i've been i haven't went back it got i got stuck back in february and it's july and i'm still <laughs> <laughs> hey i remember i remember when i was a kid you remember uh you, you talked about like gaming tricks wasn't there that game like tech mobile or something like that where you just used to uh -huh. it was like oh. a trick uh -huh. you remember that no, i wasn't thank god like Nintendo. I, was that old. I wasn't on the game, oh, but I man. played that game. Yes, that was, that was my high school buddies and I game after practice. <laughs> and we played it a lot after practice during two days in high school. Uh, Walter Payton and Bo Jackson was my guys because you those were the glitch mm -hmm. in the game. You could take yeah. Bo Jackson and score every play when he had the ball. <laughs> yeah, it was something like that. It was like a trick where you had one dude, you could go back and forth and he could never catch you. It was, I can't yeah, remember. It was Bo. It was, yeah, it was, Bo, it was Bo, right? Bo. Yeah. 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 Tech mode. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So Amon, you've talked a little bit about it already. You have your own podcast on iHeartRadio, mm -hmm. the gamers lounge with Amon Green. Yep. Tell us about that. And what's your favorite part about being the host? Oh, well, the favorite part about being the host on that show is that people learn about another passion that I have. I mean, they watch, everybody watch me play. 15 years, you know, three years of college football at Nebraska, 12 years. Uh, so at, you know, Seattle late, I was passionate about it. I ran hard. I was physical. That's how I was taught to play the game by my, my older two, uh, my two older brothers, you know, Jerry and Nikki and, uh, and then my stepdad, Edward. Uh, it was something that it was, it was in me. So now 
with the podcast, I get to share another passion and it's talk about video games and the culture. So the show, it, we, we record tomorrow um, around noon and it goes up around an hour later. And then actually tomorrow night, it'll be later, it'll be like 6 p.m. But you could download it now and we talk about the whole gaming culture. So we just don't just talk about video games for a whole hour. We talk about, we start the show just kind of just checking in because I have two uh, guest hosts, Ben and John, and I asked them, hey guys, what y'all been up to the last week? Kind of like how you came into your show here. And everybody talks about what I did on the weekend or what I didn't do, or what, if it was a good day or bad day, what, what have you, we bring that up. Um, mm -hmm. And then we get into topics in the esports world and what's been going on and, or in the video game world, just what's been going on from um, the hot and heavy topics like uh, the, uh, in terms of social distancing with COVID to the, a lot of, I say um, the one tough topic has been a lot of the, uh, I say, accusation um, coming up in areas of companies now and how they're going to address, you know, uh, streamers and popular uh, streamers, uh, I say celebrity streamers that uh, out there and doing things and employees of companies doing things they shouldn't be doing, you know, to, to women, you know, abuse and unless they stuff like that we've been talking about hard and heavy topics mm. but then we have we, we try our best that we have fun we talk about game releases for hot games that are coming out um for the summer uh, games that we're excited about personally we share those comments and then um to round off the show we uh talk about what's on stream because obviously with covid it's a big time to talk about uh what's on either netflix or hulu what you watching why you watching it what you recommend you know for <laughs> myself or, who, or who's listening in to go watch the show um, on one of those apps and then uh one of my favorite another another passion of mine right? being the geek that i am i love horror movies so i've created a segment <laughs> of my show and i know it's a lot of horror movies. um i created a segment on my show called turning point and you know and it's usually the, the slasher movies you know that moment in the movie like <laughs> If you don't go to Camp Crystal Lake, you'll probably still be alive. So don't go. So I'm just like, I'm that little Jiminy Cricket on the person's shoulder telling them, don't go to Camp Blood. Don't go down that hallway. Don't turn chase around. That. Right. Turn, you know, go go up, don't go out the door. Don't go upstairs or down. Exactly. The don't trip and fall. Run. Keep your high knee action. Get to the car. Start it and go. Don't drop the keys at the door. You know, get the car keys in. You know, so I'm that little little conscience. <laughs> I've developed my fun segment called Turning Point at the end of the show. So that is the uh, Amon Green's uh, Gamer Lounge uh, breakdown, rundown of our, of our show. We have a lot of fun on there. Oh, I almost forgot. We have a fun section on there that we call, call This or That. Um, so some of our classic fun conversation pieces we had was, one question was this or that. Uh, toilet paper, do you have it rolled up or under? <laughs> That, that wow. that's like that's like a, a deal breaker for mo most relationships. It's like, man, if you fold that thing wrong, you might have problems at home. You know. So, <laughs> so which paper. way? Which way do you go? This way or that way? Like, how do you do I, it? Over. I just under. found out yeah, this is a thing under. like in the last year. So <laughs> it's it doesn't a matter to me. They, they say. They say. Oh, I just they say it goes if, under. I don't care. <laughs> They say if you have a if you have a cat, I think it goes under, right? So if the cat spins it, it can never probably oh, never get loose. Yeah. Good, good. One. Dog, I would just be happy if it made it on the roll. <laughs> That's all I want. I'm making sure that it's there so I can use it for what it's there for. I don't care how it is up there. It could be a a wall a wad of wet toilet paper just thrown on the wall. As long as I can use it its purpose, I don't care how it is in the next to the toilet. So. Here you go. This this or that. Jason or Freddy Krueger? Oh. Oh, that's a good one. Nice on the spot. I would have to go, I would have to go to Jason. But Jason doesn't mess around. He gets to the point. He hits the initiative. Freddy, he likes to play games with you. He wants to toy around. <laughs> he wants to joke. He wants to turn into different things and people. Jason is like, look, oh. here, I got this machete. You know what I'm about to do. So you're either gonna run. Or you're gonna stand right here and take this. So, Jason. Good choice. Michael Myers or Jason? Oh. Well, they both the same. <laughs> <laughs> See, they, 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 they're, those are their guys. Those, 
like in the military sense, they do their orders. They do what they're supposed to do. <laughs> oh, it's hard. Uh, I would just go with Jason because I like his mask better. I like the hockey mask. Oh. That is, that is. Hey, all right, here you go. This or that. You ever seen Candyman, the old one? Oh, yes, yes. Candyman or a new Candyman? Oh, the new stuff is never as good. True. I want to say it's not. We don't know yet. We haven't seen it, but <laughs> I'm going to go off the old school. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the old school here. I used to be scared of Candyman, though. I remember we used to go in the bathroom oh. with Candyman. I just, I'm not scared, yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm not seeing Candyman in the mirror. Just know that. I'm being <laughs> smart. Turning point. Turning point. <laughs> You'll stop at two. You'll be the one person with the with all the people, and they're gonna be in the bathroom together. And the candy man, you're like, I'm out. I'm not even gonna go with one. I'm not even going with one. Nah, it's not even one coming out of my mouth. I already said the name once, so I'm not doing it no more. Like <laughs> He's smart. <laughs> hey, so Gosh. Oman, right? You were an elite athlete in the NFL. And then you switched over, you know, to, to this, this esports category, twitching and all that. And, you know, there's a stigma twitching. with a lot of gamers. <laughs> twitching, is that, is that not the term? Dreaming. Is that wrong? Dreaming. Uh, <laughs> hey. Can we not make it. twitching like. No judgment. Make, thank no you. Judgment. Thank you, Aman. I appreciate okay. that. I, I appreciate yeah, that. So, so, you know, there's this negative stigma maybe with a lot of gamers where they have their Red Bulls, their monsters, you know, their chips and all that. So, how do you how do you stay in shape today? Is there a lot of that going on in your life, or do you see a lot of that going on in the community? Or how are you guys staying in shape or staying? Uh, like, well, for myself, I uh, make sure I get in probably an hour to an hour and a half a day of fitness, um, and that's that's warming up, that's doing my workout if it's weights or cardio, and then that's a cool down. I mean, it's a stretch, um, you know, yoga based stretching, and I do yoga um, probably like once a week. Um, during the week, um, I'm hitting it at five, five days a week right now. That's where I'm at. I'm at I'm at full season stride right now. I wish I could. If I wasn't 43, and if my wife would let me, I would play. I would go to either Green Bay or <clears throat> Pete Carroll's a nice dude. I'll go talk to Pete. Be like, hey, I need another running back or maybe linebacker. I might want to be on the <laughs> side of the ball this mm -hmm. time around. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, I just need about 20 plays a game. I give you that heart hot and heavy. Um, but I, I make sure I keep that in the regimen because it was kind of put there by my parents uh, when I was young. So when I was playing Nintendo, playing Tech Mobile, playing Tech Mobile 10 yard fight, my mom would just come in the room, boy, you better get outside. Go outside. <laughs> you play for an hour, play for two hours. All right, go outside, go get in trouble. You know, that she would say that jokingly, and I would get in trouble anyway. So. <laughs> but I just kept that mindset so I play for a couple hours and I go get my hour or two in of training then I come back later um, hang out with the family eat dinner talk about what's going on and I go back down into my uh, man cave and, and turn on the stream if it's a, a one of my gaming nights um, if not I'm just going on there and get better at one of the games I love to play so wow, when you have wow, that question it was yeah. more on that it was a couple more no, it was more. Uh, it was more about the, you know, the, I guess the culture of gamers, right? And you know that negative stigma that they sit around and just drink, you know, yeah, monsters. And I don't know if that's the case. You know, I think I think it'd be good to hear, you know, uh, especially from someone like you, a role model, let them know that you're working out, and for them to be active, not just sit on the computer screen to get out and maybe, you know, interact. Yeah, and, I, and I'm here to like not change. I say educate that to the cool gamers knowing what I'm going I'm to tell you now that it's kind of that's kind of like part of esports history. So over in Korea, where Starcraft 2 had became real popular back in uh, the turn, you know, to early 2000s, 1999, 98, <clears throat> their, their training regimen is somewhere between 10 and 12 hours a day of gaming. Um, wow. And that was what worked for them because they were obviously trying to be the best at what they do. Um, but now, real, you know, where we're at now, 2020, realistically, we got to put a sense of, you know, in terms of sitting down, um, what that does to the body, you know, that is, tightens hips, it tightens your low back, because I know that's where I'm tight at, um, but then you talk about stuff with the hands and the arms, so making sure you get that blood flow, and that's what is then going to train or do some type of workout. It doesn't have to be a hardcore, you know, thing like CrossFit or football training or baseball training, but it has to be something or you're on the treadmill for at least 30 to 45 minutes. So I'm not saying you got to go, you know, hardcore and uh, um, be in shape, but at least as long as you're sweating a, a one hour a day, 
that keeps everything functioning normal. Um, and then you won't be, you know, getting into that where you have those issues physically and you won't be, you'll be getting out of the, the six stigma sense and just be aware of the drinks. Because uh, I've been uh, in events where they were sponsored by G Fuel and other esports drinks. And um, to them, that's their business. But I just say, just educating people, like just read the label. If you find someone there that you don't know um, how to say, maybe you want to put it down. But if you ask the question, if you have a representative there, say, hey, tell me what this word is and what it does to me while I'm playing. And so just make yourself aware of what you're putting in your body. That's it. Um, drink a lot of water. I say this to not just my soon to be esports athletes at, uh, at Lakeland, but also to the kids I train or myself, my teammates, hey, drink a lot of water. It's a, a good a good way to have, you know, things to do in your, in your life because uh, water is like our body's oil. It helps us keep functioning. And, uh, and then I say cut back, just watch your sugar intake. You uh, read labels on a lot of things. Uh, if you have your sugar, you want your sugar intake to be probably 12 grams or lower because we got to have it. It's not a, like a non thing, but try to keep it low. Um, that'll help you stay in, uh, I say good general health. Anyways, that's almost like, like the nutritional national from like the higher up doctors that, that tell you from down below, like this is what the, 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 the benchmark is to be, to be healthy. Wow. So you talked to, yeah, so you, you talked about gaming. Let's talk about the mental aspect, right? So gaming mm -hmm. probably requires a lot of mental agility and fortitude. So how do you cultivate that, and what advice do you have for others? I'm sure there's something you probably teach, you know, in class. Man, yeah, you're, we're, we're hitting marks that I have on my uh, my presentation for my first couple mm -hmm. of meetings for my esports team now. Um, and so how you prepare for esports or competitive gaming, I mean, one thing is you got to learn how to lose first. Mm -hmm. Learn how to lose mm -hmm. the right way. Because uh, you can't win every game. You're not going to win every game. Are you going to, can you win a lot of games? Yes. Can you be someone like Ninja or players from FaZe Clan or the, the esports organizations around the world? Yes. But trust me, they lost a lot of games before they got really good and before they won a championship. Um, so learn how to lose the right way. Because as we know, <clears throat> our bodies, we're emotional creatures. So happy, mad, or sad when we're playing a game and we lose, an emotion comes out. And that emotion can affect us mentally because then if we're in the middle of a game and the game's not over and we're still mad about losing that last match, we can't focus for the next match because we're still upset, hurt, or disgruntled because we thought either the other team cheated somehow or there was a lag or the joystick didn't work or the keyboard didn't do this or the mouse didn't do that. You're blaming everything else, but not blaming yourself, but like, wait a minute, what could I do differently to help myself win or help my team win? And I can't blame everything around me because the other team on the other side is dealing with the same um, variables. They have a keyboard, they have a, a mouse, they have a, a screen that might have a, a, a lesser lag than yours. So you got to go out there and just say, you know what? All right, I got beat. What did I do wrong? You know, what I need to do next time when I'm in that situation? Don't let me get off my off track up here because to the next play, my team might need me. And if I'm more mad about a play that happened five minutes ago, I'm not going to be in the moment there to win the next play. Mm -hmm. Annette says patience is key as well in the comments section. Yes. Patience is number one. <laughs> So you had a very successful football career before esports, and they seem like very different worlds. But to hear you talk, it sounds like there are skills from the NFL that translated over to your new career. What types of skills do you find in common between the NFL and esports? Um, the, the skills that I find in common is the one skill of basically being ready, being prepared for what you have mm -hmm. to do. Um, so that means obviously like for football, I make sure in off season, I was in shape. I was off season conditionally conditioning constantly to make sure my body <clears throat> was ready to go as an NFL running back physically. And so as a gamer, you got to do the same thing. And so I'll, for example, go with any player that gets ready for an FPS game, a first person shooter. Um, you make sure you got to have, have obviously quick reflexes, good high um, eye movement, 
and then planning out your strategy um, of the of the game. Like Call of Duty, they have three or four different game modes that you got to play. It's not you know there's a death match, but then there's um, domination, there's hard point, there's search and destroy. All those game modes have different strategies. And then obviously at the end of the day, the first thing is can you can I shoot straight? Um, so make sure my ADS and my aim down sights is on point. Make sure when I shoot at something, I don't miss it. Because if I miss it, it's going to hit, you know, I'm going to lose the gunfight. So it's just having that time to get the reps in, repeating that, aiming, doing aiming um, or uh, FPS training programs, um, which we have, I have downloaded on my computer downstairs that helps with um, aiming. If you're using a mouse, if you're using a joystick, so it's always training those little tidbits because as a football player, you know, obviously I train my speed. I train my uh, quickness by doing jump ropes and agility drills. I train my speed by running sprints and lifting heavy weight. And also then I got in the book. I learned what a cover two coverage looks like, what cover man, cover one man looks like, press, <laughs> cover three, cover four. So I got to know. So for the esports uh, player, they got to know the same thing for their game. And they got to learn it and they got to be an expert at it. So when you mentioned something about that game, they could just spit it out just like that. And because they, they got to know it because they got to react in an instant. And if they don't, you know, they lose the gunfight or they lose the match. Mm -hmm. Hey, I think, uh, <laughs> you, you, did you see this comment from Brian here? I think he wants to mess with you. He asked, <laughs> did you ever get mad at your rating in Madden? <laughs> uh, did I ever get mad? Hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't say I got mad, but I definitely opinionated about it. <laughs> and I think any player that is in the game can do that because they earned it if when they're in the game. But it's like, okay, if you're going to put me in your game, at least get me right. <laughs> get my abilities right. And I got a couple, I got one quick story that I had about when uh, I got, I was in Madden F one year and it was early in my career here. It's probably year two or three as a Packer. And it was 2000, it was actually 2001. And so it was my second year. And our third year, it's 2002, my third year. And we had a, a rookie receiver that year by the name of Robert Ferguson played at Texas A&M. And I remember I'm sitting in the locker room it was right after that Madden came out that year. And I'm sitting in my locker right after practice, just getting my you know clothes ready to go to meetings. And he's like, AG, hey, man. He said, man, they, you got to check with EA. I said, what? He said, man, they got you fumbling every other play in Madden. I said, what? I said, for real? I said, oh, man. I was like, yeah, man, I was trying to win the game. I gave you the ball and you fumbled it and they won. I lost on the field goal. I was like, come on, come on, man. I was like, I know, I, I know I fumbled. I didn't fumble that much. He's like, it's ridiculous. So I end up at the time. <laughs> so at the time, I, I still know people there at EA. We talk kind of quite a bit. And at the time, a guy by the name of Sandy Sandoval, he worked there. He was kind of like our, our the concierge to players. So I would call, I called him up and say, Sandy, we got a problem. <laughs> if you fail the coders or whoever's developing, you know, updating the game, let them know that they got to fix the ratio of my fault. I don't fumble that much, okay? Let's, let's fix that. And uh, I'm not sure if they did or not, but I just made sure they had the they had the, the remark in there. Um, I hit send and talk to them. <laughs> you know, uh, so, yeah, but uh, but players do, man. They get, they get salty if they're not rated right. I've been watching it <laughs> with the younger players for our, I say the younger players, I know they're probably getting mad at me when I say this, but they're a lot sensitive than we were. <laughs> um, well, they get, they get, they, they take it, they take it to heart. They take it to heart when they get uh, downgraded a little bit on their uh, speed, their agility, their catching traffic, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny. Funny, funny, <laughs> all good stuff. So what is Amon's favorite games to play, watch, and shoutcast? So, I mean, you probably know right now Madden is one, is one even though, you know, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> um, but I, no, I love, but for serious, well, I love playing Madden. Um, between, between the, so that'll be my game to play if I had any other game to play and play halfway woken, you know, where I'm barely a lot, I'm barely sleep, you know, I'm barely focused on the game, which I have. Uh, so that's just from experience. That's why I'm bringing that up. But uh, so Halo, 
And then RPG, man, it's a long list of fun games. Uh, GTA, all the GTAs are fun. Um, I recommend it above 18. No kid <laughs> under the age of 18 should not play <laughs> GTA. And that is okay. a recommendation of me being a parent. And when I've had a lot of fights in my house about that game, right? <laughs> and it, you should have won every fight because you were right. For one, yes. you're a parent, and two, if that child was under the age of 18, they should not be arguing about <laughs> playing GTA. So, um, everyone does it, mom. Everyone does it. You're the only mom that says no. Be like, so what? I'm still saying no. <laughs> um, uh, Red Dead Redemption, Assassin's Creed. All the, the sagas goes on. I'm playing Odyssey now. I love it. I can't wait for Valhalla to come out. And then obviously Halo and Halo Infinite. Oh, man, I'm so jacked up about that coming out here in the, in the later in this year. Um, and then the classic Pac-Man, uh, Tecmo Bowl, <laughs> the 10-yard fight. You go there. If you play, if you know 10-yard fight, you know this. That's 10 yard fight soundtrack right there. <laughs> you don't have little Yachty, you don't have Big Sean, you have whatever that is. <laughs> That's, That's great. 10 yard fight. Yeah. So those are my favorite. Those are my favorites. Hey, Ahmad, the Army family and uh, uh, MWR programs ask Ahmad, are you a FIFA fan? So they have a, a tournament this Saturday for active duty Army and Army National Guard soldiers. And of course, the exchange nates are providing prizes for their multi-game 12-week tournament. And the top three at the end of the tournament get a trip to Complexity in Frisco, Texas for a day in the life of a professional esports player. So that's the question is, are you a FIFA fan? Yes, I'm a FIFA fan that is not very good at it, but I'm a fan. <laughs> hey, there you go. Not very good. <laughs> so also, um, here's another uh, uh, question, right? I know you, you mentioned it earlier. You recently added a new line to your resume. Esports coach at a university in Wisconsin. Now, I, you said you, you touched on it. Is this new? Is this something that just started? Like, I've never, you know, I, I got the esports thing, professionals. I just read an article where I think some kid won $4 million or something like that a month ago or two months ago. And I was like, wow, they're paying that much for esports. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> so they're paying a lot of money. When, when did this, like, coaching or, 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 or you know, be, being a teacher at universities come about? Is that this year, last year? When did that start? And how does that uh, work? It started, it started, it, it started this year. Uh, I got hired officially in February. Um, but how it came about is what I had, what I was talking about earlier, how I got into the industry with shout casting. So with the shout casting, when that started, I had already been coaching traditional sports. I've been coaching football, baseball, basketball, or no, um, well, strength training, strength and conditioning, um, but track and baseball and, uh, and football. And I play a coach, obviously running backs, linebackers, and sometimes uh, safeties and DBs and, uh, and run, obviously running back. And then it, so that was going on at the same time while I was delving into the esports uh, business world through my contact, my buddy Hank Basket and the other connections I made. And then once I got connected with Larry Ridley, that's when the shout casting started. Um, and then anybody around me knew that I was in the gaming. Um, they knew I was passionate about it. They knew I loved doing it. Um, and I had even been uh, asked to volunteer at a local high school in the esports club, which I did at Bayport High School here for about a year. Um, and that was prior to me getting hired on. And then one of my buddies, like I told you, that I geek out, geek out with, uh, Larry, his name is Larry. Um, and he used to be a student and was a faculty member at the school I'm at now. He brought it to me. And then just through the time between, I would say, the time I started shoutcasting, which was around 2015 to now. So all, I'll be five years of shoutcasting. Mm -hmm. And then just keeping my ear to the wire, hearing, listening to all the new updates in the world of esports and video games, um, the new games coming out and learning every little thing about the game and knowing, and then getting connected, I say hard line into the business side of it. Uh, talking to higher ups in different companies from Riot Games to Origin PC to uh, Microsoft uh, Gears of War uh, department, Microsoft Halo department, making those connections. I started to really get a, a, well, a good sense of, of esports from the fandom side of it to where it's just fun, casual gaming to actual, all right, this is how we're gonna make money creating a game. And so once I was learning all that, 
even I myself got involved with a company called ESTV. We're stationed, it's a network out of Los Angeles, California. We broadcast esports 24 7. We're pretty much the ESPN for esports. It's ESTV, <laughs> it's on Samsung Plus TV, it's on Roku. It's on Amazon Fire TV, um, where you could have the channel, I believe, on Sound um, Plus is 1357, if I'm not mistaken. But just look for a bluish, purple, neon, uh, green letters saying ESTV. So I became the business development, one of the business development directors there. And again, sitting in meetings and just getting the flow of things. And I was like, probably around 20, I say a year. So fast, fast, I say I'm gonna rewind real quick. So when I got into shoutcasting, uh, then a year after that, in like 2016, I started, I took a, a leadership program and a leadership development program to help, you know, um, hone my leadership skills. And a lot of the things I found out in that program that a lot of it I learned from playing sports. Um, I had, I just had to sharpen them, you know, just like any athlete, anything, you got to sharpen your tool. I did that through that program. It helped me learn different things I needed to, you know, teach or show young adults about being just a well-rounded human being, not just a, a good athlete, not just a good gamer, but just need to be a well-rounded human being. And so then I'm like watching different little events from esports events to regular football, baseball events. And I noticed one event in particular, it was uh, the X Games in Aspen uh, early that year of 2016, where it was at the X Games in Aspen, it was a Halo tournament and a guy by the name of Lethal, who eventually I met. So this was kind of part of my motivation to becoming a coach in the esports world was Lethal, the Halo pro, who's very good, by the way. At that event, he, whatever reason, got set off. Something made him not happy. He was mad at his teammates during this tournament. And during the tournament, he jumped from his team to the, another team at the same tournament. And I'm still <laughs> like, um, okay. So that's like me saying, you know what, Coach Sherman, I'm mad at you. I'm gonna go play for the Bears for this next game. Man, not only Packer Nation, but my teammates, everybody be like, dude, what is wrong with you? I'm gonna go play for the Bears on Monday Night Football. And then he lost the game, you know, so let, you know, so Lethal went to this other team, lost the game, but then figured it out later. And he's still playing as a Halo pro, but I'm like, that doesn't happen. You don't quit your team during the tournament, you know, during the playoffs. Like, I'm going to quit my team during the playoffs to go jump on the Patriots roster because I know they're about to win or I'm mad at my head coach or one of my teammates. Can't do that. So I noticed that esports needed um, some leadership in it. And I'm not saying it wasn't there, um, but I felt that I could come and bring a different change in from my point of view, being that I have a professional background in uh, the NFL and sports in general um, that I could bring that in. And so that's where boom, fast forward to now, I'm like, this is my opportunity to do that. And I'm gonna take it um, one step at a time. It's gonna be all, I say research and development is you you live, you learn. And so far I've been uh, having a good connection with my esports uh, uh, players on the roster and we've been communicating. We're, 13 days away from training camp. It's August 10th. And they're like, coach, for real, this is going to be a training camp? I'm like, they're like, it sounds like we're going to do something like you did in Green Bay. I'm like, yep. <laughs> I say, minus the hitting. We won't have pads, shoulder pads, and helmets, but we're going to do two a days all day. We're going to be up early and at them and gaming for two, three hours at a time. We're going to work out as a team. We're going to eat as a team. This is how we get together. This is how you create, you know, what I, what I learned, how you create a good, uh, a good winning program. Wow. I love that. Um, Amon, we know you have a big heart for the military. In fact, Leah and I, we met you last year at TwitchCon. Yes. At the yeah. We had a, a booth um, and we were working with some military esports athletes. So we know you have a big heart for the military. You told us that you have such a love for men and women who serve. Right now we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Coasties, military families watching from all over the world. Do you have any words of encouragement to share with these folks, especially during these challenging times? Yeah, um, well, I got family members too that served or did serve in the army. Um, uncle, on my mom's side of the family way back, I wanna say maybe World War One, maybe World War II in the Navy. So 
my brother, wow. one of my older brothers was a police officer. He served in uh, Omaha, Nebraska for 23 years. And so, and then close friends, um, like my buddy Hank Basket, his brother was in the army. I believe his dad too served as well. So to everybody that are in the armed forces to, um, I say everything in uh, the world that has been going on from COVID to the social uh, awareness of Black Lives Matter, um, for every soldier and person that represents the military, they've told me that they, they, this is what we fight for, for the, the reason why, you know, we do what we're doing, obviously not where it gets violent, but to the point where we could peacefully protest, because in most other countries, when you peacefully tr protest or any type of protest to that government, they, you know, they're, they're aggressive. They don't just mm -hmm. throw you in jail. They're, they're, they're doing, as we've seen on video, you know, they do hateful and hurtful things. So um, for the, for the troops out there and the families still in and being at the bases, because I've been in that, I've met families that, that live on the base and I know how base life is, is, is not as a, a pretty picture sometimes for the family because mm -hmm. I've dealt, I've met families that have lost a loved one in, 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 during their, during their time. And now that now single parent has to then deal with young kids and now raise a family by themselves. So, um, they share those moments with me in those times. So I appreciate the time, the effort, the sacrifice of their, their husband or their wife that has to go into, uh, uh, I say, um, a, a tour. Um, I appreciate that because it's a big sacrifice. It's a big, uh, time commitment of life time and because they're away from their families uh, when they're doing their jobs overseas wherever they're called upon to do you know do their work as uh, being in the military so thank you uh, thank you for those words Ahmad. You got lots of love on facebook uh annette cortez i was going back she says my son is a professional gamer plays mortal Kombat, and many others uh, uh yeah all gaming tournaments have been put online due to the pandemic uh, Blake Richardson says, Aman, Cod, Black Ops 4, uh, <laughs> a lot of jokes. Go Pack Go. Yeah, um, well, I, I get that a lot on my stream. I get a lot of Packer fans in there, which is cool. There's a lot of Packer yeah. fans in the game. I mean, just in general, lots of uh, Injustice 2. I don't know what, what that in reference. Oh, that's a fighting game. Too? Same, oh, uh, same studio as Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 11, Left 4 Dead, Cod. Oh, yeah, everybody's co-signing all this. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of comments on here, but it's go going great. Thank you so much for everything. Ju what, what else we got, Judy? Yes, and I think we got a couple more questions here. Oh, okay. we have a couple of more questions. Fire, fire away. I think it's Leah. Is it Leah? It's me, yeah. Amon. I'm curious. What? <laughs> I was still looking at the comments and laughing because uh, somebody said you're dating yourself, Chief. <laughs> yeah. hey. We were talking about Nintendo. We were talking about Nintendo. You yeah. remember Nintendo? People, yes. People don't. Yeah. Atari, Nintendo. You know. Uh, you got to train them. Gotta, like gotta bring, Sega. Gotta teach them the old school. Have to teach. Well, them. wasn't that like eight bits of graphics back then? Eight bits, right? Maybe that. We don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at you, dropping your tech knowledge yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What is cheap? I not know. <laughs> I used to play Zelda. You remember Zelda? That was a hot game. Oh yeah. The original oh, Zelda was old school RPG right there. Yeah, I, I learned that. That's a role-playing game. I wrote that down. There you go, Chief. Yep. I got good, all this. Good FPS, one. FPS, <laughs> nice. FPS first, first person shooting, ADS, aim down sight. Yep. I, I got, I'm getting this. I'm going to be She's out there. taking I'm notes. Getting, I'm going to be out there kicking butt soon. You got, now, you got a nice little uh, <laughs> vocabulary of esports, not a uh, verbiage right there. Yo, you know what I need to know? You got me motivated. Should I get like a new Xbox or a PS5? Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't make football money. Hold on, hold on. Hey, <laughs> you in the military. Y'all do a y'all should be able to connect. I know y'all got to deal with Xbox and Sony. So boom. <laughs> hey, look, I want oh, I'm Chief Reyes and I command the Microsoft sent me the Xbox X series and the PlayStation 5. I'm gonna go to jail. That is Might one, not be ethical. I don't know. Yeah. That one thing I would take advantage of. I'm sorry. I'll be like, look. Y'all just gotta send me everything. <laughs> send me everything. Controllers, games. You gotta you could I do gotta, um monitor, you know. we gotta test this out. We gotta test this out for esports. Maybe I, I can't take it, I can't take it myself, but maybe they'll send it to like the Army and Air Force, you know, MWR programs so the service members could use it somewhere and everybody could play it. I think right. that would be exactly. that, that would probably be the ethical way. 
a couple in. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail. Get demoted. I'm going to lose all my stripes. You, we don't want you going to jail. We don't want you going to jail. No. But he's going so, to jail. So you're saying you're saying both of them. You think both of them good platform, different. What, what are you saying? See, I'm speaking this because I'm a I'm a gamer. I don't have, but there's beef. Trust me, there is beef between consoles to PCs to keyboard mm -hmm. users to controller users. It's just like the Crips and Bloods. I don't know what it is. East Coast, West Coast thing going. I, I'm like, look, here, I'm in the middle. I like Xbox. I like PlayStation. I like PCs. I play on my phone. I'm on my phone two, three in the morning playing, Um, what's this game? Got me hooked. Hold up. Let me go to my phone. <laughs> Pong? Is, is it, it Pong? Is it Candy Crush? Toy, Toy Blast. <laughs> Toy, Toy Blast. Blast. <laughs> okay. What is that? What I'm up that? on this game till what? two in the morning. Okay. Is that like I'm Candy Crush? <laughs> It don't matter what it is. I play games. I play video games. I play board games. Look at look at look at all these board games we got in the house. Oh, oh my. that's awesome! Oh, I board love games. that. We play Tonk. We play Rummy. We do everything in the green house. Are you like? I just oh, saw. I just saw a movie the other day called Game Night. Is that like you in there? <laughs> yes. on game Night. We it just in Game Night. They had like a hit. Somebody had a hit on them. Somebody. We we don't take it that far. We ain't killing. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just, just hold it right there. Just full disclosure. We just, it's just bragging rights and pride getting lost or one here. That's it. <laughs> little Jenga, little Jenga Monopoly. We have, we have a, a industrial size Jenga. We have the big ones that oh, wow. you see at the bar. Oh yeah, we. This oh, is a yeah. game in household. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. How about hold up? How about your Connect Four? You got a Connect Four, the big. Yep, we got a Connect Four. Where is it? At? <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> we got logo game. We got Connect Four, we got Outburst, we got Heads Up, we got Operation. Trans Operation. We got the Transformers version of Chest. Up <laughs> oh, <laughs> we got Transformer Monopoly. That means I could buy uh, what's that one? Megatron Planet or something? Cybertron. That's what it is. I could buy something. <laughs> you land on Cybertron. Cybertron. You, owe me, you owe me five hundred dollars. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> so you love gaming, and what about? what you watch. What is Iman watching? Um, we know you love horror movies, but do you have a Netflix playlist or? Oh yeah. We, um, <laughs> last night we just watched a really good movie. I'm going to talk about this on my podcast called The Old Guard with uh, Charlize Theron. It's a new mm -hmm. actors too. Um, I can't think of the guy's name, but I recognized him. He was Joe Farr from the new Aladdin with Will Smith. He was the evil sorcerer, but he's in this movie too called The Old Guard. Peep it out. It's a good action flick. It has a little bit of history in it because it, I don't want to give the movie away. It's a cool movie to watch. So it's, 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 if you like action movies, um, you gotta, if you like Charlie Theron, he's easy on the eyes. Um, yeah. she, she, she is. Yeah, she's not bad. People up. But just she's shopping people up too. Just oh, for real? oh wow! Oh, wow! wow. Oh. Yeah, I just called up the poster. She looks wow. This looks. She looks the same as she did twenty years ago, thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. She hasn't changed. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out. You got right. me now. You got me. Now you got me with my face. pen. So that's you. That's. You, you got me with my pen. I'm I'm taking notes now. I'm taking notes. This looks interesting. This movie. Check that one out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it you just watch Ogar any shows you watch like Ozark uh yes I'm watching Ozark solo my wife's not a big fan she's like I guess it's the gangster they two gangster in there you know it's a gangster <laughs> show you know with Jason Bateman that's the last person yep. I thought would be in a gangster tv show would be Jason my man Bateman. Was he from Facts of Life or fi Family no, no it wasn't Family Man it was Facts of, no, it wasn't Facts of Life was he was show. on Silver was Spoons, it? and then he was on, um, oh, he was on Valerie, Game Night. Valerie's family. He was on that, oh, the, yeah. Hogan, the Hogan family. Yes, that's what it was. It just, I never saw him be a gangst, in a gangster movie, though. but he's doing good, or TV show. He's doing good, so I'm watching that. Um, let me, actually, let me go real quick to my Netflix. Yeah, he was on Game Night. He did pretty good on Game Night. Yeah, he, he, was. Was, the, he was the husband. Yeah, he was, yeah, husband. He was hardcore, night. too. He's been busy lately. You know? Yeah, he has. He has. Very good stuff. Um, uh, the Last Dance is on there now. Um, the Last Dance. 
Hold yeah. on, which one? Oh, from Michael Jordan? Yeah, the basketball stuff. Uh, yeah. Last right. Last Chance You. It's about, it follows a, a community college football team down south. Um, the Flash. Uh, 13 Reasons Why, which is a hmm. very good, like, social awareness TV show. Yeah. Um, we watched another show the other day. My, this is my wife's pick. I was like, all right, I'll do it. Uh, Banana Split. That's the oh. name of the movie. It's a, What's it's that a about? Young, it's, a, it's a young adult. Um, dating, relationships, friendships, right. things of that nature. It's funny. It's cute. You know, it was kind of like our date night movie. <laughs> yeah. Is it like that one movie? What was that one movie with the, um, where Keanu Reeves just popped in the middle of it? Do you remember that? It was like a no-name movie with the Asian actress. And Keanu Reeves uh, just popped up in and everybody was like, Keanu, they got Keanu Reeves in this movie? Oh my! Oh, well, it had to be that? punching and kicking going on. That's all he does. There it, it was a little bit. Um, there was a little bit of that. Let me see. I'll tell you the news. That's kind of good. That's not John. Lori Wick. Sa- that's not John. Lori Wick. says in the dark is amazing. I heard about that. I did get uh, referred to that, so I gotta watch that. Um, it's called Always Be My ma- My Maybe. Always be my hmm. maybe. Oh. Yeah, he just like it's just a regular. It's a it's a cute little movie, but Keanu Reeves just come out of nowhere, and it's it gets kind of funny. He has a funny scene in there. Okay, a good fifteen uh, minutes. You know what I mean? But he represents. Got it. Well, he's a good actor. He's been around. He's doing. He's doing oh, Bill yeah. and Ted again. You know, it's all awesome. yep. he, he is. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're bringing that back. They, Excellent. They, they brought it back. It just COVID <laughs> held everything up. I think COVID. Yeah. COVID is is stronger than the Infinity Gauntlet. They just show down <laughs> Black Widow and everybody else. That's how bad COVID is. Like, <laughs> oh, man. I'm waiting for John Wick 4 or something. Or is uh, there a John Wick 4 coming out? I will go see it. We gonna, we can go see that together, Chief. Yeah, Aww. I like John Wick. Dangerous. John Wick, John hey, legit. Yo, I love Keanu and that. I've I seen all three movies. I got John Wick toys in the basement. <laughs> he got me. Hey, I th- he only says like three words the whole movie. But he, he must like, you know, he must take out a whole city of yeah. bad guys. <laughs> right. But it's, you got one shot. One shot to the, to the one shot yeah. to the door. <laughs> That's it. Um, That's it. Amon, we have had such a great time chatting with you today. Thank you for spending some time with us. Where can we go online to find out more about you in the esports world, on social media, and where can we find that podcast? All right, here we go. Um, podcast can be found on iHeartRadio. It's the Amon Green's Gamers Lounge podcast. Um, Twitch, you can find me at, at Amon Green TV. Um, I'll be, I'm usually been streaming every night, but now since I have my coaching duties coming up, so I've been streaming, streaming like twice a week. So I'll be on tomorrow night okay. uh, playing my Halo. is Wingman Wednesday. Um, but I have a oh. team up Tuesday. I have a throwback Thursday where I play an old school game. And Saturdays, wow. when I can, I play a, a story mode game, a story mode Saturday. That means any RPG that I haven't finished, like I'm finishing off uh, Resident Evil 2. Um, and that's been a remaster. Mm-hmm. And then uh, social media, I'm on <clears throat> Twitter and Instagram at Amon Green 30, all one word. And Facebook, uh, Amon Green on there. And uh, come in and uh, Lakeland uh, Esports is our Twitch channel name for Lakeland University. And then we'll have a Lakeland. We have Lakeland uh, Instagram and Twitter. I know Lakeland Twitter is Muskies Esports. So that's our mascot, which is the muskie, which is a, a native fish to Wisconsin. Uh, M-U-S-K-I-E-S uh, Esports is our Twitter handle. And soon to come, we'll have a TikTok because you know these kids today they want they got to be on. TikTok. <laughs> I'm like, You're gonna be out there dancing. I'm. I told him I won't be dancing. I will be partaking, but I'm not busting no moves. I can't dance, but they don't, I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to give them that smoke. <laughs> so great. <laughs> hey, Yvonne, thank you so much. Hey, stick around real quick after, after we go off live, but we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for spending some time with all of us, you know, especially with the Airmen, Soldiers, Sailors, Marines, and all the family members out there watching. Uh, we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors and of course in your new your new teaching job so you're, you're paving a way for other schools and other you know instructors to come out so we'll see where this leads the future you know of, of the united states and of esports uh, so thank you very much exchange out all right you're welcome thanks for having me bye bye don't hang up though don't hang up <laughs> <laughs> Bye.